the FLW Tour is in Shreveport, and the top anglers are spreading out all across the Red River to find the big bass. That's one good one. If I can get five of them, it's gonna be interesting. Oh yeah. Can one man hold on for a wire-to-wire -wire victory, or has he taken too big a risk? We're in, son. Whether we'll get out, we don't know. Oh, she's bearing the thong. Uh-oh, Bubba. It's rock and roll, partner. Holy camoly, what a start. Yeah! Let's do it. Good gosh, what a feat. <laughs> It's happening today, boys. <laughs> Whoa! It's the Red River in Louisiana. There he is. Yeah! And the fight is on as the world's best bass anglers try to tame this tough fishery. That's what I'm talking about. With cypress bayous and a bustling downtown, Shreveport in the northwest corner of the state is the host for our event, the FLW Tour Major on the Red River, presented by Off. You know, the river's setting up right now. It's pretty tough fishing. I mean, the, you know, the biggest problem is there's a lot of current, so the main river's really not all that good. The conditions are kind of crazy. We've had a lot of rain. All that stuff that was up north is all coming right down the river. Everything was flooded and really high. The bottom line is on this river, if you can find a little bit cleaner water than mud, your, your chances are always going to be better. The majority of anglers locked down river over the first two days, trying to find that clear water. Conditions are changing rapidly, and the backwater bays have been the destination of choice. This event marks the start of the second half of the 2011 season, and at the halfway point, two veterans are leading in the Angler of the Year race. To stay in, in the lead for Anger of the Year or stay in contention, you just got to catch them every day. I mean, you can't hardly falter a single day on this circuit because there's so many quality fishermen here. It'd be the neatest thing in the world to uh, win the Plains Championship. That's the true test of who's who in uh, bass fishing. That's my dream. What can I say? After strong starts, Stacy King and Tom Monsoor both missed the first cut and didn't advance past day two, which leaves the door wide open for someone else to take over the points lead. 20 pros remain in this event, each of them earning valuable points and each with a reason why they should take the title of champion. But the man who's written his own unique chapter is Mercury Pro John Cox. He's taken an incredible gamble to get to the top of the leaderboard after the first two days. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Harper, along with Chris Jones. And Chris, you take a look at the spring. The weather has been insane to say the least. We've had lots of rain, thunderstorms, tornadoes, and high waters, which we have on the Red River. The anglers came into this event knowing it was gonna be a difficult tournament, and it has been for most of those anglers, except for one. That's rookie pro John Cox from Florida. Two years ago, practicing for another event down here, he found this little area that has exploded into a gold mine. But the challenge is, he's having to get through a drainage ditch to get to a spot. He's using a 17-foot aluminum boat powered by a 75 horsepower motor, but it sits light, it sits shallow in the water. He's able to get to the spot, and when he gets there, he's catching 14 pounds a day but the water's falling out. It's dropping six inches a day, and he said this morning, I won't be able to get there today. He's got a totally new game plan today. He's gonna try another spot that he found in practice that he says is just as good, Jason. Well, he's got a seven pound lead, which isn't that safe out here on the Red River, especially when one of the greatest anglers in the world is hot on your heels. In second place, National Guard Pro Brent Ayler. Today is cut day. We narrow the field down to the top 10 pros and on the line, a top prize of $125,000. I promise you there's gonna be some movement on the leaderboard today. The Red River is one of the major tributaries of the Mississippi River, and on its journey south through Louisiana, it has so much variety of cover for bass to live in. Small backwater pools and secondary creeks are popular holding spots for largemouth as the rains and floods up north has churned up the main river. Well, the water was high and, uh, and had a pretty good stain to it, but now it's falling and cleaning up a little bit. I think today's gonna, you know, could turn out to be the best fishing day we had. I have to catch them, you know, this place is tough. The weights are really close from second through 20. The water's dropping a ton, the fish are moving, fish are changing quite a bit, so, you know, it's anybody's ball game right now. 
Bryn Ehler is as consistent an angler as you'll ever meet. And if you took away John Cox from the mix, he'd be leading a tight top 20 field on this third day. But Cox has put such a distance between himself and the rest of the field that most anglers are just focusing on making the final day cut. The rules are simple. Each angler can catch as many bass as possible, but they only bring their best five back to the weigh-in at the Shreveport Convention Center. Tournament waters include pools three, four, or five. John Cox has decided to stay in pool five today, and while he doesn't need to force his way through a culvert to get here, it's still no picnic accessing this area. He feels this is the better bet but it hasn't started off like he hoped. When it first came in, I was, you know, I thought I would get a lot more bites in here. It's just, uh, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going through my head. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, nothing's really going smooth right now. It just doesn't feel right. I mean, I, if I can just get one hit, I know it's gonna be a good one. Oh, you, ah, dang, that was the bite we were looking for and I missed it. Things have started out quite a bit differently for Clint Brownlee, who already has a limit and is looking for a big kicker. Yeah, I've been throwing this little buzz bait the last couple of days, and I'm throwing it on a spinning rod, which is a little different, uh, but I can throw it a lot farther. I can throw it 10 to 15 yards farther than a bait caster, and that seems to be the key because, you know, they're, they're real spooky, and I can kind of sneak up on them with this thing. Diet Mountain Dew Pro Jason Christie started in 11th place, and he feels he's in the right area to help him make the cut. You know, for a river system, this is the perfect draw. I mean, you got an island here and an island here. That island there, you know, it goes forever, and all the current that passes through this bay has to come through here. You know, it's not rocking right now, but this is the best scenario for river fishing. Number two. He only weighs about a pound, about three quarters of a pound, but feels like a 19 pounder right now. So the field is starting to make up some ground on the leader, who still doesn't have a fish in the live well. We're just leaving the first spot we stopped at. We're gonna go to the second spot and uh, hopefully both get our limits there. Find out who makes the final day cut right after this. Beautiful Red River Bass. FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Off. Keep bugs off. Chevy and the Silverado HD Motor Trends 2011 Truck of the Year. Walmart. Save money. Live better. Plano. America's favorite tackle boxes. Mercury Marine. And by Everstart, fish more, worry less. Welcome back to the Walmart FLW Tour Major on the Red River presented by Off. Today is cut day and anglers are spread out all across this big fishery, scrambling to stay above the cut line. There are 10 spots up for grabs and David Dudley and Terry Bolton find themselves both fishing the same area, trying to find that big bite that will secure their spot in the final round. Dudley and Bolton are both fishing a flooded forest deep in a backwater. A hard rain last night has brought the water level up and the bite's been slow all morning. Well, basically there's a, it's like a little channel or a ditch coming out of here and there's stumps on it. So you're just basically casting and uh, retrieving. You're throwing up on, into the shallow water, bringing it back into the deeper water. Now the water's gotten a little dirtier back here today, which may make them not bite quite as well, but I think if the sun would ever pop out today, it would really help. You know, that's when they'd really get on the targets on the dark spots. Bangy, come on, son of a gun. While Bolton is still looking for his first keeper, David Dudley looked at the conditions and took a more unconventional approach. 
fishing absolutely amazes me. Here it is, the water's done come up. The water's gotten a little bit muddier. And common sense says they're gonna go in shallower. So I do the opposite. I come out here deeper with a crankbait and bust two right as soon as I start it. Just when you think you know something about fishing, you end up getting humbled. And on cue, David Dudley's co-angler, Jeff Sprague, hooks into a solid fish. Good gosh, Bubba. You need that one, son. Yeah, boy. Give me some of that. We probably have boated in, you know, two days between me and Bolton. 70 keepers, maybe. And that's the biggest one out of, you know, everything that we've caught. So I'm happy for him. And, you know, it gives me confidence that there might be some big ones swimming around. The area where I'm fishing right now has some of the best grass that I, I've found on, on you know, the entire river. And not only does it have some of the best grass, but it's, it was really clean water. You know, as soon as I pulled in, I saw it just look good and I instantly had a couple bites. So, you know, it, uh, it gave me a lot of confidence to kind of, you know, spend some good quality time in here. That one might keep. Oh yeah, little guy. Yeah, number three. So the third day of competition comes to an end and it's time for the anglers to bring their five best fish to the weigh-in on stage in downtown Shreveport. While the pros compete for a spot in the top 10 and the chance to fish for $125,000, there are lots of ways you can compete in FLW Tour events. Fishing from the back of the boat is a great opportunity to fish with the best in the world, even if you happen to be among the best in the world in a different sport altogether. Pro Scotty Lego won the bronze medal in the half pipe competition back in 2010 at the Winter Olympics. But he's also a lifelong bass fisherman, and he's here this week to compete in his first FLW Tour event as a co angler. Tour pro Stetson Blaylock, his AMP teammate, took him out for a practice day before the tournament started. Today I went out fishing with Stetson, and uh, it was awesome. Woo! Beautiful. Hold on, hold on. Let me get an iPhone photo real quick. Oh, yeah! I get to learn a lot about what it's like to be a professional angler. The main thing with this whole fishing deal is stay positive. You can only catch them one at a time. One right there. Oh. Got another one. Ooh. Look at here. Now, what's your deal? Do you, uh, do you catch the fish or anything like that? You got any superstitions? or? No, I don't kiss them. Something I like to do is smell them. <laughs> smell them? The smell of fish is the smell of money. Uh, I will be honest, that is a little bit weird that you smell the fish. You want to touch it? I want to smell it, actually. You want to smell it? Yeah. It smells good. It's cool because, you know, we're both the same age, and he's great at something he does, which is totally different from, uh, from what I do. He's going to do a double cork, a snowboarding trick. Oh, he stomped it. Scotty turned in a very impressive 44th place finish in his first tournament. And while it wasn't a gold medal performance for Lego, it was for Keith Carson, who bested 150 other co-anglers and took home the $20,000 prize. Eleven pounds, ten ounces. Daryl Robertson started the day in 19th place, but his big sack guarantees him a spot in the top ten. David Dudley sacked a limit from the spot he shared with Terry Bolton, and he'll fish on day four. But the off pro only managed one fish, putting him on the wrong side of the cut line. 10 pounds and 11 ounces. National Guard pro Mark Rose had a solid day, keeping him in contention, alongside Clint Brownlee, whose spot on the Red River, he says, is fishing very similar to his home water, the Flint River in Georgia. National Guard pro Bryn Ayler, who can catch them anywhere, was disappointed with his small limit today. But it was still enough to earn him the right to fish tomorrow. John Cox abandoned his first spot early without a fish in the well. He ended up with a limit, but will it be enough to take back the lead? John Cox, here we go. Did he do it again? That's the question. 12 pounds, one ounce. That's got you in first place with 40 pounds and 11 ounces. Wow! 
So there you have it, our top 10 for the final day on the Red River. John Cox has a lot of big names behind him, but his gambles have been paying off, and he only has one more day to secure the biggest win of his young career. For an in-depth look at how our pros find winning patterns, subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine. It's only $15, and that'll get you eight issues, plus a digital version filled with how-to videos. Just go to FLWOutdoors.com. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors and the Walmart FLW Tour here on the Red River. This event is presented by Off. Here we are on the fourth and final day of competition, down to just our top 10 pros. And Chris, what an awesome event this has been all week long. Kind of break down what's happened. You know, John Cox, he did it again yesterday, Jason. He's catching fish, man. He's had an awesome tournament. He's got an eight pound lead over second place, Clint Brownlee coming in this final day. Things have really seem to fall in place for rookie John Cox. But, but the question is, can he hang on for one final day? I think the fish are going to bite today. I mean, it's quite possible where I'm at if things go well. You could catch a 20-pound sack. Yeah, if you catch a couple five-pounders, anything's possible. I could catch over 15 pounds a day and make it really interesting. So we'll just have to see. John Cox has a big lead, but nothing is certain in this game as Cox knows all too well. Let's take a closer look at the five anglers with the best chance to take home the title. In 2010, Cox had a nearly 11-pound lead going into the final day on Lake Okeechobee, and he had a lot on the line. I told the old lady, I said, you know, we'll get married when I win one of these things. But it all fell apart for him in the final day. He lost the lead, and his girlfriend is still waiting for a ring. I think I'm off. Oh, my God. He's hoping to put those bad memories to rest with a victory today. Clint Brownlee's home water is the Flint River in Georgia, and he's been using similar techniques to those that work at home to great success all week on the Red River. He starts the day in second place and knows a big sack will put pressure on the leader. This would be uh, an unbelievable achievement. I've always wanted to win an FLW Tour event. To beat anglers like the Brian Frist, the Brent Aylers, it'd be the highlight of my career. Yes. I like to stay real, and realistically, John's gonna be tough to beat. That may be true, but if anyone can make a comeback today, it just might be National Guard Pro Mark Rose, who grew up on the banks of the Mississippi and whose record on river systems speaks for itself. Yeah. I'm going to need a big bite. There's a 16 or 17 pound bag out there. It's just so tough to catch it right now. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's won the Forestwood Cup and nearly $1.7 million in his storied career. I was excited when they you know, had Red River on here because I like this kind of fishing. Daryl Robertson has proved he can catch him anywhere, but he's most dangerous flipping muddy banks like on the Red River. I'd like to come back next week. Gary Yamamoto is a bass fishing legend who's been utilizing his patented soft plastics all week, and he has an area all to himself. Nobody's in the area. It's a jungle. It's a tough, tough place to get to, and uh, it's ideally suited for what I do. And what he does is catch big bass, and he's thriving in the tough conditions here this week. Yay! No question the Red River's been fishing tough all week, and huge swings on the leaderboard are possible. John Cox's eight-pound lead might seem insurmountable, but today he won't be able to access the key areas that his small aluminum boat was able to get him to all week. It's his tournament to win or lose, but if he stumbles, the rest of the top ten have come back on their minds. Let's do it. Game time. This is it. Day four, Red River. We go out, try not to get stuck, try not to break anything. Hopefully catch about 10 pounds and uh, take it to the house, I guess. Easier said than done on the Red River. Mark Rose knows this, and he's using all his experience to try and get that big bite. Having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. Normally, I don't throw a little six-foot rod with a spinnerbait. 
But uh, yesterday I got out and I spooled 20 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon on here and I got out this little six foot rod. I keep this in my boat just for throwing a topwater bait. But I saw all this tight cover. The water came up and there's laydowns and logs and overhanging stuff and so I broke out my little six foot rod. I've had this rod since high school and uh, works really well and kind of brought back some old, uh, old memories. John Cox didn't run far this morning. He's in the Red River South Marina pocket, fishing lily pads with a spinnerbait, trying to get a reaction bite. He's confident about this area, but he's fishing as if weights were zeroed because he knows that Clint Brownlee is in a spot with big potential. Clint's in an area where, you know, you, I, I mean, it's possible to catch 18 pounds out of there. So I gotta, you know, get some good ones, some good ones. <laughs> it's happening today, boys. It's going to happen. <laughs> Number one. I think we're going to sack them up big time today. <laughs> For Clint Brownlee, his area has been producing well, in part due to his technique of downsizing. I just think this, this river is really heavily pressured. And that's kind of how our river fishes back home. Same kind of deal, a lot of pressure. So uh, all I do is just I downsize my bait, as you can see. This is a 1 8 ounce buzz bait. You know, just that little bit of difference, I think, has got me a few more key bites. There he is. Let's get out of this. That's a good one. If I can get five of them, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> We're in, son. It's the final day on the Red River, and John Cox is taking a risk. Whether we'll get out, we don't know. If it doesn't pay off, our top 10 will be ready to take the lead. Yeah! Woo! Yeah, baby! It's the final day of the Walmart FLW Tour here on the Red River. Our top 10 have gone north and south in search of the right water clarity, which means pushing further into the backwater bayous. It's a huge commitment of time, but can pay off big time if the bass are home. The last about week or so, it's been dropping, so the fish are moving a ton, and it's hard to get back into these areas because there's so much timber and it's getting harder and harder by the day. The river is receding after recent flooding, and that means bass have scattered, searching for clear water where it's easier to find food. The conditions are very tough right now. The water's real muddy, and, and it's kind of a key just to get in the back to try to find that clean water. And I think the deal is the water's down, the fish have pulled out, so they're gonna be, I think they're gonna be out here on the edge this morning. And I even think later in the day, they're gonna pull out here in these stumps. There's a ditch that runs out here. See that bird right over there? They've been on all these stumps back in here, these shad are moving around. They probably were spawning on these stumps at some point in time, but it's just had a lot of shad in it, and that bird that's sitting over there is just like how they've been in here every day. So that's told me there's a bunch of bait in here. He's got to eat. It's his means of survival. Rose has been working the stumps in this area with a crankbait diligently this morning and has three of the live well already. That's what I'm talking about. Right there, big long sucker. Man, that felt good. 9.30, four in the boat. We need a couple more just like it. Fish should have weighed five pounds and it weighs about three and a half. Man, four more of them. And Chris Cox to run out of gas or something. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Three and a half here is like a toad. Woo! 
I decided to change it up and go to a pond. I saw where we were going in. We knew we had to hit it on plane to get back in there. It dropped off in, in the back of it, and uh, we just gassed it, trimmed it up, and you know, a couple feet of water across, and just trimmed it up and rode right in. We're in, son. Whether we'll get out, we don't know. We're gonna catch some fish and then worry about it later. I think we're gonna catch the limit now. The further back I go, the less bites I get. Pulls the fish out when the water's down. The fish move out toward the deeper stuff. The water was up like it was yesterday. I got a few bites back there, or actually right in here, but I can tell it's a little shallower than what it was yesterday. Just bumping it off the top of this uh, mill, mill foil and it looked like a reaction bite. She just couldn't stand it, slapped at it, and she got hooked. Hickey. They're not eating, it's just a reaction bite. You know, you hit them on the head and they can't stand it. They're on the border for it. We're getting there. I came in here yesterday and in about an hour caught 10 pounds and, uh, and then left. There's a lot of fish in here. They seem like they bite most of the day, and uh, we're just gonna hang out in here and, and hopefully get our five, and, uh, and then cross our fingers that we can get back out through there. Number two. There you go, he's hooked in the mouth. Little fat one. Cox is being patient, knowing that every fish makes him harder to catch. Darrell Robertson doesn't have the luxury of patience if he's going to move up. And he's gone to an area close by the launch site and is rewarded with two quick keepers. Woo, thank you, Lord. David Dudley is trying out new water in pool five on this final day, and that has been a good decision so far as he has put four keeper fish in the boat and can now start hunting for a kicker or two. 13 inches. Sight fishing. If the bass, if he's tight on the bed and you can get him to stay there, he'll swim off and he, he'll come back. And some people will just cast a lure in his bed and hope that he'll bite that lure. But you want to catch him quickly or quicker, get a jig or whatever, and really try to hit him on the head and chase him out of the bed. Then he gets angry quicker, and you can catch him quicker. This fish. Yay, this is a good one. I threw in there two times yesterday, never got a bite. You just gotta keep at it, I guess. Look how fat she is. Two pounds, that's a good one. Only need three more now. Uh-oh, that's a good one. That's right, that might be a two pounder. Thank you, Lord, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> Whoa! Give me four of these and I'll compete with number one. Got in pretty easy, but now getting out, I don't know if we're even gonna make it, but we're gonna try. That wasn't too bad. We made it out all right. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors and the Walmart FLW Tour Major on the Red River. This event is presented by Off. It's been a grind out on the water today, and while John Cox is maintaining his lead over the field, Clint Brownlee and Mark Rose are making positive gains. With just a few hours to go, it's time for anglers to make a few tough decisions. I intend on catching a couple four-pounders before the day's over. 
Yeah, I'm in fourth place. That's got a pretty good check, but I, I feel like to stay in fourth place, I'll have to catch about seven or eight pounds, you know, today. And I noticed the two pounders because I caught two of them here yesterday. Concentrating on this muddy bank with plenty of laydowns has proven to be a good strategy for Robertson, who continues to find better quality fish on every bite. Thank you, Lord. That's what we're looking for, about five of them. Just uh, a little tip for fishing timber or a crankbait in general is fishing fluorocarbon line. Or ever since I've switched over to fluorocarbon, I get so much more sensitivity on my crankbait. There may be a little moss or something on one of these stumps, and if I get some on it, man, I can feel it instantly. That crankbait just doesn't act right. With monofilament, it would just still feel kind of dead. So fluorocarbon on your crankbait really helps. Uh, it's real abrasion resistant, more so than monofilament. You can use higher pound test and still get smaller diameter. So fluorocarbon on your crankbait is a big advantage. Rose is using every trick he knows to find bass amongst the stumps of this muddy water. Running a shallow crankbait is allowing him to maximize his potential for strikes. Oh yeah. <laughs> We've just put our fifth one in the boat. Another nice one. And they're back on the crankbait again, which gives me confidence of maybe catching a big fish, you know. I've caught some nice ones in here, so. I've got one nice one, so. David Dudley is having another good tournament, and with this top 10, he'll pass Stacy King and Tom Monsoor in the Angler of the Year race, putting him in a strong position, going into the last two events of the season. Uh-oh, that's a good one. Get in here, boy. That's right, that might be a two pounder. That one could be possibly a two pounder. That's that. Right now, if I got about three pounds, uh, I, I know someone's gonna come in with 13, 14 pounds. I'm just gonna keep my head down, you know, for the next couple hours and <laughs> hope I get a couple hits. I mean, all you can ask for and hopefully they get it. I've been getting a lot of hits today. They're just not hanging on to it. You can change color and all that and sometimes it makes a difference, but I feel like uh, if you're in the right spot, they'll just eat it. They just weren't hanging on to it this morning. This is not what most people would call bass fishing. We all think about bass fishing as casting and winding, and here I'm sitting and dabbing my lure right into the uh, cover here. But sometimes it works. <laughs> wow! Another one! Oh, look at this. Give me four of these and I'll compete. I'll compete with number one. Yay! Three and a half. Magic tree. Yesterday there was nothing in it. I'm happy. John Cox is still reeling them in and is looking to upsize his limit. <laughs> I think that one might miss it. <laughs> That's a real key for that. Get rid of old Shorty here. It's a nice trade, huh?
FLW Outdoors is brought to you by Lowrance and its HDS High Definition System with Structure Scan Add-on Option. Evan Root E-Tech. With three years, no maintenance, spend more time on the water. Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Duracell. The battery trusted everywhere. Keebler. Uncommonly made, uncommonly good. And by National Guard. Always ready, always there. It's the final hours of the FLW Tour Major on the Red River in Shreveport, Louisiana. For John Cox, the day has been a lot of short fish. He only has two in the live well, but he continues to believe he can win this event. While Mark Rose has five keepers in his live well, but has gone several hours now without a bite. Gary Yamamoto puts his decent fourth keeper in the boat, but needs one more like the three pounder he caught earlier. Brent Ayler has one good fish today that he caught early, but hasn't caught a limit yet. Clint Brownlee is also finding his area stingy today and is still searching for his fifth fish. Meanwhile, Castrol teammates Daryl Robertson and David Dudley are culling up and adding weight to the live wells. This is it. We're going to try to make it happen, at least get three keepers. I'll feel so so if we get three keepers, but otherwise, I'm not going to have a chance. Because they're going to catch them today. That's just what they do. They catch them. Never fished a place where it's this much of a grind. You catch a few good fish and you think you're doing the right thing, and you say, well, I'm going to stay here and do it five more hours. And you got a chance to catch a big sack. We've been fishing two hours without a bite now, so it's sure trying. It'll test your patience, but you don't leave, because it could happen at any time. This is a good one. If we can get him. Oh, don't do it. Right. That's a two and three quarter anyway. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm trying to make it happen. That's all you can do. Oh man, I don't think it's gonna make it, but we're surely gonna measure that one. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed. It's long. <laughs> Let's see. Come on, baby. Oh, oh, oh. I think we'll check them when we get in there. Just in case, just in case. I'm still heartbroken from when Scott beat me at Okeechobee. I just, when I think about it, I get sick to my stomach. I don't want, I don't want that feeling again at all. At all. I like it I, one bit. I don't know what the leader is doing, but he, he was showing a spinnerbait that he was throwing. If he's doing that and just covering a lot of water, then it's not going to change. But for us that are fishing specific spots, we can wear out our fish. Oh, shucks. Come on, get in the boat. Oh, good. Almost two. Yamamoto gets his fifth keeper. While Mark Rose is also moving up with this solid fish. It's a nice trade, huh? John Cox only has three in the live well, and one is maybe too short to keep. <laughs> That's a real keeper there. <laughs> well, that's number four. Well, it's definitely number three, maybe number four. But uh, we ain't got much time, so I'm going to keep rolling and maybe get two more of them. Oh, he's hooked on there. 
I think that one was my measure. And just like that, John Cox has seen his hot streak revived as he picks up some crucial last minute keepers. Oh, he touches, he's good. Probably really number four. But we, we're gonna get one more and get rid of that other one. Now what I'm doing right now, I just, these fish, they're in the shade, and I say, well, I'm gonna power pole down. And the reason I come in behind, because I can power pole and the wind won't blow us into it. If you try to come in from the front, the trolling motor's gonna spook them. Get out of there. So I'm just trying to be real quiet. That'd be number five. I don't think I've ever put so much into a tournament before. I mean, just practicing until like the last second, and, you know, having to strip the boat down to pretty much, you know, nothing to get into a spot. And boy, it'd be nice if it all paid off. There she is. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my God, I've been waiting for that bite all day long. Wow, look at this, release fish. Look how many times she's been caught. Holes all over her mouth. I feel a little bit better with that one. Little bit better, look at that one there. Two pounder, never been so happy to catch a two pounder in my life. Get rid of old shorty here. Now we're talking. One more cast. Five pounds. Last one. Yep. Last cast. The day went just according to my motto. Time is up on the Red River, and as the anglers head to the weigh-in, all eyes are on John Cox. I don't know. It was, today was my toughest day by far. Uh, I hope, I, you know, I hope it's enough. I, fe I feel good when I caught that last one, but you just don't know. So we're gonna have to uh, just wait and see, find out when we get to the show. And what a show it will be. Thousands of spectators are already on hand at the Shreveport Convention Center, experiencing all the Outdoor Expo has to offer while they wait to find out if anyone can catch John Cox. John Strelick, Mike Reynolds, and Bryn Ayler have already weighed in, but after four days, none of them could reach the leader's three-day total. Castro Pro David Dudley is up next, having a little fun as he reaches for his kicker. It's either going to be real big or real small. <laughs> also, not enough weight to take the lead, but he's happy with this one as he is now the season points leader with a shot at the Angler of the Year title. Christian Romans, Daryl Robertson, and Gary Yamamoto all brought five bass limits to the stage. Wow! With his dog in hand, a beautiful fifth and final fish for Gary Yamamoto. But none of them could produce enough weight to overtake John Cox. It's starting to look like a runaway victory until National Guard Pro Mark Rose steps up. He's climbed the standings each day this week. Good fish. And with a five bass limit, this river rat has the title in his sights. Yeah, baby. Here we go, number five, kicker. 10 pounds and three ounces to take the lead from John Cox, new leader. 12 pounds and 11 ounces for the National Guard Pro, Mark Rose. Rose sets the mark to beat and Clint Brownlee falls short. Nine pounds, six ounces, that moves you, Clint, into third place with 40 pounds and one ounce. A great tournament for you. He led on day one, led on day two, led on day three, did his honey hole spot on Thursday, Friday, opened the door for his first tour victory. He's carrying the National Guard leader bag from DeBerry, Florida, John Cox. 
He's taken incredible risks all week, and those risks paid off, giving him an eight-pound lead going into the final day. But he's lost an even bigger lead on the final day before. Will this time be different? This is a special moment. We're down to our final two pros. Do you have number four and five, sir? Let's see them if you got them. Take them to the front. You need it. Two pounds and nine ounces. Five worth. Seven pounds, 13 ounces. Your champion is John Cox. John Cox holds on for the win, erasing the bad memories that have haunted him for so long. All day, the whole thing, you know, when Scott beat me in Okeechobee, that's all I could think of. You know, I was like, wow, you know, I had an 11-pound lead then, and I got beat. I only got an 8-pound lead. You know, at noontime, I only had, you know, two fish. Man, it was just all happening over again. I felt sick, and I remember that feeling when Scott pulled all them big fish out, and, you know, I was like, I, you know, I can't let this happen. And I, I think I held my breath for about, you know, until weigh-in time, you know, just throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing. So it's a new beginning for John Cox, not only as an FLW Tour champion, but as a man who's fulfilling a promise he made on an FLW stage over a year ago. You said on the stage when Scott beat you out at Okeechobee that when you got that first win, you were gonna do something real special. Do you remember that? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get married now. <laughs> if she's watching on FLW Live, I have a feeling, I don't know, not that we're putting words in your mouth, but uh, it, you're a man, I mean, you gotta hold up to your end of the bargain. Yep, Sharon, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> Was that a proposal? I think we just had a live proposal on the FLW Outdoors stage. Oh my goodness, well, there's no excuse to say, honey, I don't have money for a ring because it's right here <laughs> at your feet. That's true. It's a happy ending for John Cox, who proved this week that sometimes the biggest risks lead to the biggest rewards. I guess when it's your time to win, it's just, you know, everything just falls into place. You know, it just all works out. It's unreal. I don't believe it yet. <laughs>